yeah, it just kind of flows so naturally. And it's a gift for an actor when you don't have to summon everything in your arsenal to make a character three-dimensional and exist mm. in some kind of meaningful way. They're just they're right there on the page. Welcome, Elizabeth Aldefer, to The Sahail Ali Show. Thank you so much for making time to chat with me this afternoon. Oh, thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. It is absolutely my honor uh, and pleasure uh, indeed to have you as a guest. My, my family, my Afghan community, we've been uh, such fans of your work uh, on the Emmy Award nominated uh, United States of Al, um, especially uh, with what's been going on in Afghanistan. So just want to, on behalf of you know, our community and especially my family, my mom's watching, she's a huge fan of yours. Um, oh. we, we thank you for all the work you've done. Oh, well, thank you. That's, that's very sweet. And uh, on, on behalf of everyone at the show, I, I hope that you and yours are doing well and taking care of yourselves because I, I can't imagine what the last several weeks has been like for you um, watching everything happen. So I, I, hope, I hope you and yours are, are safe and taking care of each other. Certainly, certainly. Thank you. Yes, yes, we've been, we've been doing our best. I, I just wanted to you know, ask you few questions about your experience here from you um, as a cast member. I've had the honor of speaking with uh, some of the producers and Reza Aslan and Mahia Tusi about the show. This was kind of back before season one premiered and mm. um, I've had the chance to speak with Wali Habib and Sarmina Hamidi and now uh, with yourself who plays uh, Lizzie, um, uh, one of the main characters, Parker's, uh, Parker Young's sister on the show. Um, I wanted to know kind of how you first got involved with the show and what were your first impressions when you heard the premise? Sure. Uh, well, anytime Chuck Lorre knocks on the door, you pay attention, that's for sure. Um, and I had had the, uh, the wonderful experience of working with him before on a, on a show, Netflix show a few years ago called Disjointed. So I was already a fan of his work and knew that he was, you know, one of the best, if not the best in the business at what he does. So, uh, so, and actually my, my husband read the script before I did. He, um, his, half of his family is from Iran and he immediately perked up at the premise and thought, oh my gosh, what a never before seen opportunity for people to see um, kind of A, what, what an immigrant experience is like, um, specifically coming to the US and the Midwest of the US. For right, right. Um, but also um, an, an immigrant of, uh, that part of the world, which I think is so often, um, you know, reduced to unhelpful stereotypes and um, sometimes just just misrepresented. Um, so he was really excited about it, and I was really excited about it. And then um, when I read it, I I thought it was hilarious and different than anything I had ever read. So I I jumped at the chance. Absolutely. Well, and we're all lucky that you did and. Uh, were you, was it always for the character Lizzie? Yeah, it was. And in fact, you know, I've been asked a few times if 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 Lizzie was named or renamed after me, and that's just pure coincidence. But wow. um, definitely seemed like another sign that, sure. that that things were aligning the way they should. Sure, sure. Universe bringing you you all together. No, that's amazing. I was going to ask because uh, obviously uh, you did amazing work on. Uh, Chuck Lorre Netflix is uh, disjointed. Um, huge fan of Kathy Bates. That's amazing. Um, and just kind of wanted to know: Is there something unique to like a Chuck Lorre set or production that you 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 in particular appreciate? Yeah, I I think that you know Chuck and everyone that he likes to work with they are so specific about where the story is coming from. I think mm. that, you know, a lot of shows might, um, might focus more on the, the comedy, the jokes, 
Um, mm -hmm. And we certainly we certainly take great care in in crafting the jokes and the comedy of our show. But the very, very first priority of a Chuck Lorre production is why do we care? Mm -hmm. And who are these people? And mm -hmm. what are they going through? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes his shows, especially, you know, more and more lately, I think that mm -hmm. he he is really leaning into the humanity of his characters and the humanity of of the storylines that he is focusing on and that's that's really cool as a comedy actor because um you know we we get a chance to kind of sink our teeth into some moments of more gravity certainly uh i was going to ask you know that's a great segue um i should say your character lizzie Dugan, sister of Riley Dugan in the family. I just wanted to know, was there anything that you brought to that character, maybe from your own background, something personal that maybe wasn't originally written for or planned for? Yeah, you know, I think that I, Lizzie has um, kind of struggled with some alcohol abuse and I have had some troubles with alcohol abuse in, in my past. So, and specifically around um, a coping mechanism to get through grief, um, to get through a harder time in life. It kind of uh, stuck out to me immediately of something that I, I recognized in her and, and a little bit of, of Riley as well. Both of the siblings are kind of um, looking to the wrong things to try to get them through this, this difficult time in their lives. So I, I really latched on to that. And I also latched on to the, uh, the sibling dynamic. Um, mm -hmm. I, I have a really, really close relationship with my brother. Um, and I, I don't always see that relationship explored on television mm -hmm. as much as, you know, romantic relationships, for example. Sure. So I was really excited to, to delve into that, especially since Parker and I had worked together not too long prior on a pilot that didn't end up going. And I just, I love his energy. I think that we play off of each other really well. Um, and, and yeah, he's, he's, he's a great TV bro. Absolutely. Hopefully not making your real life brother too jealous. <laughs> just a little, a little jealous, but the right amount of jealous. Well, Keeps him on his toes. <laughs> that's right. That's right. No, shout out to Parker Young and um, and Dean Norris. I do want to say, you know, you all playing the Dugan family. I must say my, my, my family and I were based here in the Midwest. We're actually in Bloomington, Indiana, about mm -hmm. three hours from Columbus, Ohio, where the show is set. So oh, fantastic. Was, absolutely. So I was telling the creators, you know, I was like, this is very close to home to what we experienced coming here and that Midwestern hospitality. And it's it's so cool to see that like reflected in these characters, the, the Dugan family. Um, I was just wondering if, you know, you all, because it, it just seems so natural when we watch it. Like it's just, it's so reflective. I'm sure from what I've seen, the dynamic on, on set is, is pretty close with you all, it sounds like. It is. And we actually all kind of remarked upon how quickly that happened. I think we all were concerned that um, because we had to shoot the pilot under COVID protocols, you know, masks. And when we first started, you know, full face, you know, shields and um, whenever we didn't have to be within six feet of each other, you know, kind of separating. Mm. Um, and that was a huge challenge, but it almost, I think, hastened that, that closeness mm. uh, to happening uh, almost more quickly because we, we had to just uh, you know, get rid of any misgivings, any kind of, you know, hesitancy was, there's no time for that. We just, we just had to get, get past the barriers literally and figuratively, um, to figure out what makes this, this family tick. And, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I believe Dean is actually from Indiana originally himself. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm from Western New York, and I think that I think that those two places are quite similar, um, sure. to and and to the Ohio. So so that kind mm. of you know, I don't know that vibe just kind of uh, clicked with us 
almost immediately sure. as well. Some folksiness, yeah, bringing it to to the set. Yeah, yeah. I I did, you know, as you mentioned, having to shoot during the pandemic, and that's kind of how we saw all of season one, and certainly to an extent now still with season two. Um, I did want to ask about this season two premiere as fans of the show, like myself and my family now know um, the entire premiere was rewritten, restructured to reflect what's happening in the real world right now in Afghanistan, in particular, the story that we saw on October 7th of Riley and Al getting Hasina, Al's sister, out of Kabul um, with the help of, of everyone. And I just wanted to know from your perspective, having to come together to make this episode, um, what was that like having to, to pull this one together so quickly? Like nothing I've ever experienced in my career, and I, I don't imagine I will ever experience it again. The the amount of determination and just kind of immediate will to to tell the story and tell it correctly. Um, and and you know the this the set was it felt very much like a family and like a um, a little bit of a safe haven for for those first few weeks. As, as I think you said, we have a lot of Afghan and Afghan American, um, both cast members and writers and the amount of bandwidth that mm. I, I just, I just, I, I'm in absolute awe of mm. what they had to deal with and what they accomplished, not only for the incredible episode that came out last week, mm -hmm. but also the stories like we told on the show of getting family members, loved ones to safety and, and in a lot of cases, unfortunately, uh, failing. Um, but it, it takes a, a very courageous person to not only go through that experience, but then to share it with the world. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think it takes people years, if ever, to be able to share those those stories. And they were doing it in real time. So I just I hope that anybody who sees the the episode can feel that um, that love and that immediacy because we were we were all just stewing in it together. Um, and then we still are. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's not over. And I think that's another thing that we as a, a cast and crew are, are very passionate about making sure that this isn't just a blip in the news cycle. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of um, crises to, to pay attention to, but this one is ongoing and there's still a lot more to do. So, so hopefully, hopefully we can use the show to keep this, story at the forefront and keep people's minds on it absolutely you know like i mentioned it's so clear to see the work that's being done by creators the the, the talent uh, on screen and off um it's just it's outstanding and it clearly show it speaks to you all's a uh, commitment to this cause and the support you're willing to to show and so again again we i really appreciate it um you know, or sharing organizations like No One Left Behind and Welcome US, these sort of things, um, using the platform to, um, to get those out there. We, you know, here in, uh, in South Central Indiana, we have a camp nearby, National Guard Camp, Camp Atterbury, and um, we've had some family members going every week and, um, and, and, you know, going off the shopping list and getting things taken care of there. It's, it's like an hour from here. It's happening right here. So it, yeah. it, it's, it's no longer, you know, something you just see on the news, it's clear it's happening, you know, in our backyard. And um, yeah. it's always, it's very encouraging for me, you know, growing up here, I was, I was born and raised here in the Midwest. So my parents are from Kabul and they came and um, it, there was never anything growing up that I could be like, oh, hey, you know, that's what my family does, like on TV, there it is. But yeah, now I can point to that. It's, it's pretty cool. Oh, I'm so, I'm so glad to hear that. That's, that's the dream. You know, that's, that's the hope. And uh, I want to ask you, you know, to the extent that you can tell us uh, anything that you can share of what we can expect from Lizzie in particular for the rest of season two. Yeah, you know, Lizzie, I think is she's 
going to start coming more and more out of uh, her grief shell, if I may. Mm. You know, she's, um, she's, of course, still reeling from the loss of her fiance in, in Afghanistan and uh, this, this crisis and the way that it went down is certainly not helping, but I think that we're going to see her turn a corner and start to put this chapter behind her so she can move on. So yeah, I'm ex- I'm excited for you all to see what's in store for Lizzie. I love it. I love. I can't wait. Um, you know, in particular, we know the show is a comedy, like you mentioned, with some very serious, real, dramatic elements, which I think you know your drama background, um, you know, serves. And I was just wondering how you feel now, kind of making that transition from more dramatic roles to now comedy with with a- with AP Bio and. Um, of course, just joining now, of course, uh, U.S. of Al. Is there anything yeah. from that that you can sort of bring to this as well? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think there's been so many people who have remarked upon, you know, the nature of comedy and where comedy comes from. And I think I think comedy does come from a place of darkness many times. It's, it's a way to shine a bright light on um, sadder or, or, um, or rage or anger, you know, the, the, some of those darker emotions, if you, if you shine a, a bright enough light on it, it all becomes, you know, a, a bit lighter. Uh, and it's, I think it's good for the soul to, to laugh at those parts of yourself. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I, I always imagined myself doing dramas and I never, I never really considered myself to be a funny person until kind of woke up one day and had, yeah, like been on Destroying It and mm-hmm. AP Bio and now, and now this show. And I was like, I guess this is, <laughs> this is a part of myself that I should accept now that I'm a little bit funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, I think the skill set is, it's, I find comedy to be far harder actually than drama. I think that um, drama to me is like cooking. You know, you can kind of pull more salt and throw some vinegar in there and, you know, just kind of taste test as you go and it all kind of ends up happening on the plate. Whereas, whereas comedy is baking. There is mm. no room for error. If you, if you put too much of one ingredient in there, the whole thing just doesn't work. The whole thing collapses. So, um, so the, the, the specificity mm. that is necessary for comedy, and I'm sure you, you would agree being in comedy yourself, like there's just one hair of the wrong bit of timing and something that just killed before just doesn't, doesn't work. I find that fascinating. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I feel like, I guess I would ask how you all are shooting the show. I know it's, a unique situation where there's no like live studio audience, but I, th- I believe the laughs are like those real laughs from people watching the show. Um, I guess, how do you all, is there's multiple takes uh, to get the timing down? We, we are very blessed in that we have a rehearsal period. So we have two full days where we just get to play and find it. And I am so grateful for our crew because they are standing in for those audience members who would normally be the last bit of the of the equation. They're they're letting us know when the, when we're getting it right and when we're not. Um, and then yeah, when we shoot it, we we have a little bit more time without the studio mm-hmm. audience to be able to to fine tune things. To you know, we shoot alternate. Uh, punchlines a lot and then you know they get to go into the editing room and decide how it all fits together um but yeah I I really can't wait until we get our can get our audience back it's Mm -hmm. it's just that that's the last key in the the last ingredient in this in this comedy cake I guess that we're baking yes (laughs) doing doing our best without them but we miss them terribly absolutely well it is a it is a hilarious show. The writers, the creators, you all are brilliant at um, you know, delivering these these jokes sometimes about, you know, the hardest subjects to joke about. But yeah. it, it speaks to, you know, my my friends in our, in our community, the Afghan community, like Ursula and Fahim and Hila and, and all, everyone involved that is uh, behind it. And it clearly shows like, OK, right there, like an Afghan wrote that one. Yes. I know. 
for a fact. Um, so that's always just a, a, a joy. I wanted to ask a little bit more of like a, like a personal question. Um, I have a lot of friends who just graduated from like their BFA and MFA in theater and they're, they're moving to New York and they're, they're, they're packing it up and they're pursuing the dream of, of acting. And, and I've seen them act in, on stage and they are, they are phenomenal. It's, mm. it's beautiful. It brings me to tears, the performances at times. And uh, if you want if you could just think back to, you know, when you were first starting out, if just one piece of advice, cause I know some of them are watching right now. They're, they're fans of your work and um, are trying to get to a place in their careers as well. Uh, yeah. Something that, you know, that you go back to often? Oh gosh, there's so many things, but I, I think that the most important is, I guess, to realize that nobody knows what they're doing to a degree. I think that um, it's helpful to remember that and all of this is so subjective. And if you like it, that's all that matters. You know, I, I, I think too, too many times actors can get really caught up in, well, what do they like? What do they think is good? What are they looking for? And you can forget that your point of view is actually the most important piece of the puzzle. And if you forget that, then you can kind of start to become more general and 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 every and and fall into you know kind of this this general pool of people who are all just trying to guess at what it's supposed to be rather than bringing their specific point of view to it. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, I mean, stay true to yourself. Nobody knows what they're doing. <laughs> Uh, everybody's just figuring it out as they go. And, and also uh, invest in yourself. I, I mm -hmm. think, you know, there were, there were a lot of times for myself and, and for many of my friends where you feel like you should be investing your time or your money in something more quote unquote responsible. Um, Cause we still have this idea that um, a life in, in the arts is some kind of, I don't know, um, pie in the sky type of, you know, pursuit. Um, but, but invest in yourself and don't be afraid to invest in yourself. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And I know that they will appreciate it. I certainly appreciate it. Um, you know, to hear from an actor, an, act, an actor of your uh, caliber and, and standpoint, I, I wanted to know, because you're obviously now on at least two active productions that I know of, AP Bio on Peacock mm -hmm. and United States of Al. How do you manage to do both these characters at the same time? The writing. I mean, truly, I, I, the writing is so good and so specific that it makes my job very easy. I get to show up and be present and just kind of let these these women speak through me. Um, and that's not, <clears throat> not to say that I don't think actively about who these characters are, but it is, I mean, our jobs are so infinitely easy when the writers are talented. Mm -hmm. And I've been very lucky to work with some of the best in the business um, throughout my career. And currently with, you know, the the wonderful people at United States of Al. And, and as I said before, the, the Chuck Lorre mindset of getting these people very specific so that you know exactly where they're coming from and what they're dealing with. Um, yeah, it just kind of flows so naturally. And it's a gift for an actor when you don't have to summon everything in your arsenal to make a character three-dimensional and exist mm. in some kind of meaningful way. They're just, they're right there on the page. And you certainly, you know, take that script and I'm sure you have your own process of breaking it down and, you know, resonating certain points um, once you receive it. But, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah it's, and it's fun. It's fun to, to fit that puzzle piece into the, the bigger picture too. Right. You know, it's not, mm -hmm. not every role. In fact, most of the roles you get as an actor, the, the story isn't going to be about your character. You're not mm -hmm. going to be the, 
you know, protagonist that we follow through the entire story. So it's also really fun to watch how things shift and change in order to serve the larger story and to, to kind of work backwards to figure out what is this moment really about? You know, it's maybe about something for me personally in relation to my character, but then as a whole, how does this serve the story of Al's sister Hasina and what she's going through? Or mm. how does this serve the story of, you know, Dean Norris's character art and him moving on and, and, and finally having a love life again? It's it's the the bigger picture is is fun to break down in that way. Gosh, absolutely. You know, I I just want to uh, elevate this show again and encourage anyone everyone to watch it it's you know I've been tracking it since it was like uh, it just picked up on IMDb Pro I was kind of really interested of it every single part of the way and um, very thrilled when it was obviously renewed for season two but there was you, you just reminded me of a moment between you and uh, Art the father uh, when you were in the forest searching for your husband's dog tags Mm, yeah. um, that had been lost. That was just my, you know, my family, we were watching it and we were just locked in it was just a beautiful moment of humanity of both characters. And I love, you know, when art tells your character, you know, it's going to be okay. And you just said, win. and yeah, it was just, it was beautiful. Yeah. I think we, you know, we've all been there. That's, uh, that's the, the beauty of these characters and these incredible writers once again I can't sing their praises enough that they can come up with these beautifully specific and yet universal storylines I think that that reach beyond nationality religion politics anything you want to say I mean we all understand what that's like and uh and I hope I hope everybody can see a little bit of themselves in the Dugans certainly and yes absolutely it speaks to everyone and, and yourself included. Um, I did want to ask, like, you know, playing a character in a military family, you know, with a with the now, of course, deceased military spouse, even. Um, did you have anyone in your family that was in the military or from fr friends, perhaps that you're able to kind of tap into for that? Um, not any closer than my grandfather, who I actually never met, um, unfortunately. Um, he he, but it, I think that, that that legacy does loom large in my family and, and most families with a, a World War II, specifically veteran. I think there's, there's something um, so hallowed about those stories that are passed down. And, and you know, I, I read this statistic once. I, I'm going to blank on what it was, but it, it's, it's very interesting to me that um, the, the U.S population has become more and more segregated in terms of people who know someone in the military and people mm. who don't and never have. Mm. And I, I find that chasm to be very interesting because it that's another population that I think is, is far too often generalized and um, those, those stories and those characters can become a bit cliche. So that's a that's another thing that I'm I'm looking at with fresh eyes as someone who doesn't have a lot of people in my life, um, close close people in my life that that have been in the military and mm -hmm. have had that experience. How do we begin to understand that in a way that isn't filtered through, you know, other TV or the news or other things? Like how do we how do we tell those stories and try to cut through to the heart of of those communities in a way that's helpful and hopefully eye-opening. I believe there are at least a few um, veterans uh, involved with the show. I know of Chase Millsap, for example, who, like you said, can be in that process and make sure that what is being portrayed is, is accurate. And, you know, we see it on the show, what Riley's going through with the trauma and the, uh, everything that they did. And um, it, it's very important to have those that accurate representation, of course. So again, very appreciative, you know, even being here in Indiana, I've had friends from high school join the Marines and um, mm -hmm. just kind of seeing very similar things to what they were telling me portrayed in such a way um, was very encouraging. Yeah, and, and, and thank you for, for shouting out Chase. Chase Millsap is 
just an incredible human being for so many reasons. And he, um, he was instrumental in helping one of our Afghan writers get some of his, his family out of, out of Afghanistan and, and has been wonderful to, to me and to everybody just, uh, answering any question he's, he's, his door is always open. And, and he's actually the one who put me in touch with no one left behind to be mm -hmm. able to help them, um, in those first few days, just try to sift through all of the, all of the incoming, um, messages. And, uh, yeah, I just, I just I can't sing his praises enough. Absolutely. Well, I mean, it's just, it's just a dream team is how I, how I see it, you know, and I've had the pleasure of, like I said, being a fan and supporter for so long and, and, and resident podcaster, if you will, with having now, I think six members of the team, uh, in some way, shape or form. So yes, very... thank you. Thank you for, for, um, for your support and especially, you know, uh, representing the Afghan community too. I mean, we just, we just love, uh, we love talking to as many people from the, that community and making sure that, you know, we're just doing what we can and doing it the best we can, <laughs> you know? Absolutely. No. And the creators are always in touch with the community. Uh, we get in, we get oftentimes emails from Mahi Tusi directly and Reza Aslan directly, um, kind of giving us sneak peeks and kind of, uh, letting us in on what's going on. And, uh, that's, that's been really, really cool to see. And, you know, someone that um, hopes to one day be involved in big time productions as well. I was telling uh, the Chris, I was like, I'll, I'll PA, I'll, I'll, I'll get craft services going just to, yes. just to see how everything's going. <laughs> yes, come and play. <laughs> yeah. um, and actually speaking of the production itself, I, I did mention off the top, you know, Emmy nominated for production design. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought that was so cool. And um, huge shout out to, you know, Hila Hamidi and uh, the other producers um who made the authentic sets that are supposed to be in afghanistan uh hasina's room the their living room for example and i think it was yeah. certainly a unique way of filming it too as you know we know that you all had more time what with there being no live audience um right so the sets i just think were outstanding and clearly got the recognition they deserve yeah yeah i i agree those it's and especially those those sets in Kabul, I mean, just absolutely beautiful. And, and every, every detail is, is really considered. And you, I hope you can feel that just the tactile-ness of them. Um, Cause it's important. It is, it's important to, to get those details right. And yeah, they, they, they absolutely deserve that recognition. I think so many elements from, you know, food to speaking Dari and um, the, the food in particular and the music, I should say. There was yeah. a moment in um, the Sweetbread episode where we hear music from the legendary Ahmad Zayar, an Afghan singer, and my dad and I were mouth ajar. We thought we'd never <laughs> hear him on network TV like that before. And it was like the most perfect song. And I, I told Mahi Tusi this, and we were just laughing like, yeah, that was the perfect uh, song. Yeah, and, and, it's, <laughs> and it's so fun for, you know, for me, I, I get to have these, these, um, these realizations too, of like, this is an artist that I need to know about, you know, this is now I get to like, go on like a Spotify rabbit hole and, <laughs> you know, be, be, discover a whole other thing that I don't know that I ever would have before. Certainly. And, you know, you mentioned your husband is half Iranian, a lot of, a lot of similarities between the Afghans and the Iranians. <laughs> yeah, he actually, whenever they speak Dari on the show, he's like, oh, he could see he, he speaks some Farsi and it is very, <laughs> very similar. Um, I'm That's told it. I don't understand because I don't speak any other languages. <laughs> not <laughs> yet. It. Not yet. Not yet. There's always time. There's Lizzie always goes time. to, you know, you never know. <laughs> goes to um, night school, learn some, <laughs> learn some Pashto, learn some Dari. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Much to Al's surprise. Oh, that'd be great. Oh man. I'll pitch but, it. I'll pitch it in the right. There we go. There we go. <laughs> oh man. But no, it's seriously, it's, um, it, it's a, it's a beautiful show. Um, I'm so happy that we're in season two now and each Thursday we can tune into the next episode. Um, obviously the first episode is so important, um, to, to speak to what's going on. And I know yeah. myself, 
my family were were so excited for the rest um, of season two. And uh, Elizabeth, I just want to ask you one last question, which is, you know, who or what inspires you today? Oh my gosh, what a question. Who or what inspires me today? I think as a, as a whole, as a, as a group, um, the women of Afghanistan, um, you know, yesterday was International Day of the Girl. And there were a lot of images going around social media of, of women standing up and protesting and uh, demanding their right to continue to be educated under a regime that doesn't seem to value women um, the way that I, I believe they should be valued. And I uh, am just so in awe of those women in particular who are um, who are showing incredible courage right now. And so I'm, I'm in, intensely, um, intensely in awe of them. Absolutely. We are, we're praying for them and we are supporting them and doing everything uh, to help as best as we can. Yeah. I, uh, I really appreciate your time, your words, our conversation. Elizabeth, it's been an honor, a pleasure, and uh, hopefully not the last time that we can speak. Um, I wish you a great rest of your day, and uh, can't wait to see more of you on uh, Thursdays on CBS. You as well. Thank you so much for having me. Real quick, before you click away, thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Click right here to subscribe to my channel for all future videos, and click right here to check out this video over here. Have a great one.